world here. I hope we're all good. New setting once again. My messy bedroom at the minute. It's all off the shocks. The in-laws have moved in. So today we're trying something crazy. Absolutely nuts. I'm going to sit and watch WrestleMania 35 from start to finish. Kickoff show included. And I'm going to record the whole thing. My thoughts on everything. Before, during and after every match. I'll be buggered afterwards. Forget the women's evolution. This will be the Ollie deterioration. This is me fresh as a daisy. At the end of all. I'll be looking like that. It's going to kill me, but I'm going to do it, guys. I was going to stay up for the night and watch it, but I would have been asleep by about four, because I was knackered after doing a bit of craft yesterday and the day before. So I'm about half an hour into the kickoff show. We started off with JBL, Sam Roberts, the coach, Jonathan Coachman, and Paige. Why I've got JBL, I don't know. And then he announces he's going to be um, doing the commentary on the Kurt Angle, Baron Corbin match. So not only have I got what we put Kurt Angle, WrestleMania 35, but I've also got a public commentary from JBL. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's our new slogan. Forget the rest, watch the best. We have, so far, I've took some notes on the first half an hour because I wasn't able to record at that point. And this showed a picture of people up in there, the MetLife Stadium, up near the top. Oh, the camera's pretty moved. I wrote on my notes here, if I was there and found that my seat was all the way up there, I would go into Hitman stealth mode. If played the game Hitman, where you nick somebody's disguise and kill them and hide them in a tub or in a cupboard, I would go down backstage, find myself a cameraman. They're usually pretty easy to find with their top scene cameraman. I would take him out, choke him out big time. Not kill, just choke him out. You don't deserve to die, just go on a better seat. I would steal his uniform, hide him in a a cupboard or something or in a box then be crazy see backstage at WWE shows show like Raw and whatnot. I'd hide him on them I'd get ringside so I'd get a better seat and I'd just record the action I'd be like yeah hit my ollie in the hoose I'm watching the show best seat in the hoose um, I've also got on my notes so all you need to get a shot of the ta Raw tag team tiles is to lose a lot it's announced that uh, the Revival will defend their titles against Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. Why? I don't know. Hawkins hasn't won a match, has he? In like 500 matches or something stupid like that. And yet they're getting the match for no reason whatsoever. Just to get the Royal Tag Titles on the show. And that's on the kickoff show. How far have the Revival and the Tag Titles fallen? Um, Big E and Xavier cut a really good promo backstage with Kayla Braxton, is it? I think so. About uh, Kofi's chances for the title. Really good promo. And we come back and we've got no Page and JBL. Thank God I don't like Page or JBL. Whew. Instead, we have the radar superstar Edge and Christian talking up Kofi. Well, Christian's saying he's a B time player. And Edge is saying no. He hasn't had a chance and now he's got a chance he'll win the title. Buddy Murphy to first take it on Tony Nice is the first match we're just into that now. Ah, bro, how does Murphy not get onto the main show? We're stuck with Lashley, who had an angle, both on the main pay-per-view. Yeah, Buddy Murphy cannot get himself a match on the main WrestleMania card. Don't understand it. This will be easily one of the top four matches, wrestling ability-wise, on the whole show. Along with Brian and Kofi, AJ and Orton. Not sure of the other one, but this will be up there for definite. Commentators say this is Tony's his biggest moment in WWE. And yet, then about a minute later, they cut to a 30 second promo promoting the main event of WrestleMania. And these two just go into a little box in the corner. Well done, WWE. Way to make them feel good about themselves. Right, I'm going to get on with watch this match. I'll keep my thoughts at the end, guys. So, we have just. What? Well, I've just watched Tony Nese defeat Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. A decision I'm not exactly happy with, but if I'm honest, I don't watch the Cruiserweight show. I never off with 205, so it hasn't bothered me too much. But I do like Buddy Murphy when I see him on the pay-per-views. Always puts on a great show. Yeah, Murphy went for a running niece. Don't miss his move in the corner. Niece got up, hit a super kick, a German suplex into the turnbuckle, and then his own running niece on Buddy Murphy for the 1-2-3. 
nowhere near enough appreciation for the match from the crowd due to the fact that it's the opening match on the whole show. Then we had the Women's Battle Royal. We had a final four, well, final three of Sarah Logan, um, Asuka, and who else? Sonia Deville. Earlier on, we had a, cha- a part where Kairi Sane was nearly eliminated by Sarah Logan. Logan looks at her sitting on the apron on the outside of the ropes. All she's got to do is kick her and she'll fall out. Smiles at her and walks away. What a load of stupid nonsense. Dana Brooke then went like Hulk and eliminated Ruby Wright and uh, Mandy Rose. No, it's not uh, Sarah Morgan. Liv Morgan, that's the one. But giving Dana Brooke a bit of a push before she was then eliminated herself. Sarah uh, Asuka eliminated Deville, who was left with Logan and Asuka. Logan then eliminated Asuka. We thought Sarah Logan had won. When Carmella gets back in the ring, apparently she hadn't been eliminated. I don't know, I didn't really care. Carmella super kicks Sarah Logan to win the match. She's now won a Money in the Bank ladder match. Carmella has. And a Women's Battle Royal. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing at all. I mean, you had Asuka in there. You had Kairi Sane in there. You had Ember Moon, Naomi, for crying out, crying out loud. You had Ruby Riot, and they give it to Carmella. Seriously. What the hell does she bring to a wrestling ring? Absolutely sod all. We've just seen Shawn Michaels. He's on there right now, um, talking about, I think it's Batista and Triple H she's talking about. And we've seen Joe the King Lawler and JBL back on, talking about Shane and The Miz siding with Shane over the Miz in that both of them were. We have had some practical jokers. I don't know how they are. Don't care. We've just got three people talking to Charlie Caruso. And I don't know who any of them are apart from Charlie Caruso. We had Lillian Garcia announce the Women's Battle Royal, so she came back for that, which is pretty cool seeing Lillian Garcia back. And we've got Shawn Michaels with a leather waistcoat on a white t-shirt, an NXT hat, and a black tie around his neck. Looks quite funny, to be fair. Talk about being inducted into the Hall of Fame last night, and about DX and China, and how she's about to be part of it all. Right, guys, I want to get on with watching this kickoff show. I'll be back as soon as we have some more matches out of the way. We now have the match between The Revival, and Hawkins, and Zack Ryder, for the Raw Tag Team Championships. As I've already said, it's a bit of a joke that Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder are getting a match for the titles. Okay, so on Raw, we have ALP. I think one of them is still injured out there. Who else do you have on Raw? Tag teams, you've got ALP. You have The Ascension. The B Team. Uh, the Hardy Boys are on SmackDown, aren't they? I'd just get rid of the tag division. Yeah, I'd have a, a, a separate ones anyway. I'd just have a unified tag division like they are going to do with the women's champ, uh, division. So have all the tag teams against each other. Because in all fairness, the Raw tag teams ain't that good, are they? you got the Lucha House Party. Uh, the B team. Who else have we got that I'm just forgetting all about here? Hawkins and Ryder, obviously. The Ascension. Rude and Gable, they've already had their chance at the titles. Heavy Machinery. We could have had Heavy Machinery against the Revival here. I mean, that would have been, potentially, given the right sort of build, that could have been a on the main card. And I'd much rather see Heavy Machinery taking on the Revival than Hawkins and Ryder. Now, what's the pain? All this talk they're doing of 200 matches about a win for Hawkins. What's the pain? They get the victory here and the Revival drop the tiles. Don't forget, Revival have hinted at leaving WWE for AEW. What better way for Vince to get his revenge than embarrass them on the biggest show of them all? I ain't even going to cut that out. That is evidence that there are some right friggin' dickheads about. Some muppet just went up my road on a motorbike doing a wheelie. Like, he's friggin' Carl Fogarty or some of the stupid twat. Oh, it pissed me off. I cannot be honest to edit that out. There's going to be too many videos to put together at the end of this. So you're all going to have to put it with I'm afraid. And just now, it was some muppet who probably just disturbed your relaxing experience of my video. Hawkins went close there. Uh, on Dash Wilder. I think it's Dash. The bold one, anyway. <laughs> Is it Dawson or Dash? I think it's Dash. Let's have another look. Oh, it was a double close line, to be fair. So he didn't go close. Here's Ryder. Ryder's waiting. And he just missed his move. He's just got an elbow on the bold one for revival. Oh, and just come off the top turn. Buckle took him down. But here's Wilder. I think they want to Dawson. Oh, 
worries them much, is my guess. He's just met the pin, but he's pulled out by Dawson. Wilder's left in the ring. And Ryder just took down Matt Hawkins with a uh, running bulldog or something or other. Like a sort of type of spear on. <laughs> they're all down on the outside, basically. All four men are down on the outside. I can't keep up with the action. Looking at that, I'm looking at you. We'll come back after the match. Okay, guys. <laughs> well, I predicted it. Hawkins and Ryder, your new Raw Tag Champions, what a joke. They will not be carrying this title very long. They will not give, be given a push. Uh, there was a brain buster to Hawkins on the outside. The bold one for the revivals. Check, uh, not allowed to go after because the ref's checking on Hawkins. The bold one, Wilder, I think it is, goes to get the pin or whatever on Hawkins. Hawkins rolls him up for a quick freak out. Hawkins and Ryder are new tag champs. And now we're back to somebody else on the outside. We're talking to Charlie Caruso. Who the hell is it? I have no idea. Akbar Kabasha Pia Miller, American Ninja Warrior. What the hell do I want to give a damn about what somebody from American Ninja Warrior is saying about wrestling? Come on. Get real if you can have anyone on this little segment have ex wrestlers. What the hell are they doing? Akbar, blah, 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 blah. whoever his name is, American Ninja Warrior. Fuck off. I don't care. Sorry, guys, but this is doing my boxing. I want to skip this crap and get to the actual matches. So we are on to the Andre the Giant. Uh, men's Battle Royal. These two idiots from Saturday Night Live had entrance music and yet Bobby Roode and Gable didn't. Heavy Machinery didn't. EC3 didn't. What a joke. The Hardys did. Uh, Broad Strowman did. And these two Muppets from Saturday Night Live did. What a joke. How far has Bobby Roode fallen since his days as NXT champion? <laughs> You gotta feel sorry for the block. I'd ask for my papers right now, God's AEW if that was him. Hardy Boys have just eliminated Rhino. We had Luke Harper appear. I didn't even know he's back. I thought he was still that injured. I mean, bear in mind the block hasn't appeared yet on SmackDown since he's been back. As far as I'm aware, uh, Rude and Gabe are working off of Matt Hardy in the corner. Um, we had the heavy machinery between and picked up Braun Strowman and dropped him in the middle of the ring. Why not over the rope? I don't know. Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy now taking out Bobby Roode, they're about to eliminate him. Roode has been eliminated by Matt Hardy. I just feel bad for Bobby Roode. I mean, he probably knew what he was getting into when he came up to the main roster, but I don't think he could ever envisage it'd be this bad after doing so well in NXT. We have Andrade in there, we have um, one of the other Charles parties still in there, the Heavy Machinery, Anderson Gallows. My pick right now, with how many of how many are still in there, my pick is Mustafa Ali. Gable just took Andrade out with a couple of suplexes. He's not let go. He's going for the three suplexes in a row. We still have Luke Harper, the Ascension, the Hardy Boys, or at least what, uh, Jeff Hardy. Andrade just eliminated uh, Gable. We have Heavy Machinery, Apollo Crews, Jinder Mahal, Matt and Jeff Hardy. Luke Harper. Uh, who else is still in there? Mustafa Ali. Heavy Machinery. Oh, uh, Otis is doing his work on both members of the Ascension. <laughs> Double elbow. That was pretty cool. And the Ascension had been eliminated by Heavy Machinery. What a way to bury the Ascension. Vince, well done. Um, so, who's just come back in? Oh, Braun has just. <laughs> Braun has just come, oh my god, he's just come in, Klaus lined, um, Luke Gallows over the top, double drop kicked, heavy machinery, and then Klaus lined both members of heavy machinery. We are left with Andrade, Mustafa Ali, Luke Harper, Braun Strowman, Apollo Crews, uh, the Hardy Boys, as I said, and Jinder Mahal. Harper trying to take out Ali now. My pick to win this is Mustafa Ali. Braun's already won it once before, so he's not winning it again. Um, I think we'll end up, oh, he's just eliminated Jinder. Uh, Braun has. I think we'll end up with Jeff Hardy, Luke Harper, Ali. Oh, my pick 
Harper's gone. Harper picks Ollie up on the outs- outside of the on the ring apron for a cl- for a suplex over the top. Braun just super just big boot to Luke Harper, which takes Harper and Ollie out of the match. We're left with the Hardys, Apollo Crews, Andrade, and Braun. And all, uh, everyone's now looking at Braun like we're going to take him out. Or at least the Hardys are. Matt and Jeff are looking at taking out Braun Strowman together. Matt Hardy is looking to delete Braun Strowman. And Braun's actually looking a bit scared about these two. Don't know why. He just took out both members of Heavy Machinery, bear in mind. Andrade and Cruz going out to on the ring apron. Braun went after... Oh no! Andrade took Apollo Cruz out over the top with like sweat scissors. But took himself out as well. We're left with the Hardy Boys and Braun Strowman. And the Hardys on the outside of the ring apron. Trying to suplex Braun over the top. I feel we'll end up with Matt and Jeff against each other. Don't forget, Michael Shea and the other idiot are still involved in this. They've just come out from underneath the ring. What a freaking joke these two are. They're about to win this. I swear to God, they're about to win this. They're just about to eliminate Braun Strowman. Strowman was hanging on. Matt and Jeff have caught him. I oh, know, he just kicked them off two idiots back. Braun just eliminated Jeff and Matt. He's left with Michael Just, is it? And somebody Shay or Colin Just and something Shay in the ring. So Braun against the two idiots from Saturday Night Live, basically. They should just climb off the top right now, which I think they might be about to do. I'll well, bet there. So the match. Andre the Giant Battle Royale actually turned into more of a joke than it usually is. We uh, was left with Braun and them two Muppets from the Saturday Night Live program in the ring. And they grabbed a mark, found the one in the red did, I'm not sure which one that is. And said, I've brought my therapist with me for you to, you know, try and calm down, try and help you, Braun. Soon turned into a bit of a farce, even more so. And Braun eliminated them both. And won the Andre the Giant Battle Royale. I think that's the second time he's now won it. I don't think he won it last year. I think that's a Paul Cruz. I think so anyway. But the last two, two times in the last three years, I think Braun has now won the that ridiculous statue of Andre the Giant. And now we move on, hopefully to the main card, I think. Let's have a quick look. It's all go here. I've had to turn my wife, my, uh, my notifications off. So we do not find out who won any of the matches. Because people will be commenting on Twitter and on YouTube or not. About, especially on my vid preview video. About the results. I don't really know. I will not know who wins the Kofi Kingston. Daniel Bryan match or the women's main event until about 6pm today. I'm guessing. Uh, I've got a blow going to have a fix on tap in a minute. That's going to put me back even further. Which is just a pain in the ass. My dog's watching it with me. My little Barney, see him back there. <laughs> he likes his wrestling. Um, right, yeah, so we're now on to the main card at last. So I will be getting ahead. I, my prediction for the first match on the main card, I don't know what it'll be yet. I'm thinking it's going to be the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between Rusev and Nakamura, um, Austin Black, and what's his name? Ricochet. The Usos. And who else? It's not the new days in that much. My mind's gone blank. I'm all over the show with wrestling today. But I'm reckoning that'll be the opening match of the show. Right, guys. I'll see you shortly. Okay. Here we go. Let's get ready to rumble. It is WrestleMania 35. Perry. Hell yeah. The greatest show on earth, apparently. The best wrestling event, or the biggest wrestling event of the year, apparently. It is starting with some woman I don't know singing Yolanda Adams, singing the American National Anthem. <laughs> Send me to sleep now. Okay, it's about five and a half hours long, this show, I think. Let's have a look. I'm pretty sure it's about five and a half hours. Let me just check to be certain. 5 hours, 23 minutes and 54 seconds. We are 1 minute and 10 seconds in. Wow. A long afternoon for me. I've just got to remind myself, it is just like a Raw and Smackdown put together. And then a little bit of NXT with no adverts whatsoever. No 
5 hours and 23 minutes. Right guys, in a bit, as I said, my prediction for this match will be the um, tag team, Smackdown tag team titles. Let's just skip along here and find out what it actually is going to be. We don't actually need to see the first four minutes of this bloody show. Unless there's a ma any action. Not because I'm proud of that Triple H, Batista and the other big, oh, the Charlotte Flair promo. It's basically a promo for all the main wrestlers on this card. There's the Miz, which is for Charlotte Flair. There's Kofi, there's Roman. There's Elias, who I don't think actually has a part to play apart from somebody's songs. There's Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan. There's Mr. T, Ultimate Warrior. Shawn Michaels, when he come down off the uh, wire, down from the, to the ring, Stone Cold. We have Becky Lynch. I can't play the audio because we'll get to the video top down. There's the Rock and John Cena, The Undertaker, Ric Flair, Eddie Guerrero, Triple H, uh, Samoa Joe, Vince Shawn Michaels, or Triple H at the end there, Naomi, Finn Balor. So hey, everyone who's everyone is showing up on here. Let's skip along to about nine minutes. We should be ready for the first match by now, surely. We've got oh, Alexa Bliss is out to because um, she's the guest host of the show. I don't know what the hell she's saying. I need the subtitles on ideally. Oh well, we don't need to see or hear what she's got to say. Let's just see what the first match is. Then I'll cut the video off. Oh, for God's sake, here's Hulk Hogan. Of course, we've got Hulk Hogan. Let's find out what he has to say for himself. Holy hell, what a way to start WrestleMania 35. So, we get Alexa, please, and she brings the Hulk Hogan. They do the whole shoot with their hands and wail like crap balls to them. Paul Heyman cuts them off. Never thought of being happy and see Paul Heyman until then. Heyman comes down and says, if Brock Lesnar is not closing WrestleMania, then they are getting their business done. Now, they will start WrestleMania so that they can get out of there and go to somewhere where they are appreciated. Pro Lesnar is down for the match right now. Universal Championship is kicking off WrestleMania 35. Brock taking on Seth Rollins. What a great way to open WrestleMania. Easily the right decision because you can't have this coming before Kofi and Brian like the third match from the end you can't have it being less important than the women's main event this is your universal championship so having it open is a great way to get the fans in the mood and we will see a several and title win in my opinion I reckon that's why they're doing this now wow several is coming out to well Brock came out to Beast Incarnate Seth is going out to Beast Slayer in big letters. That's really cool. Seth will win the title. That is my opinion. And we will then see. Um, oh, Seth's not coming out. I think he, oh, there he is. I thought he was trying to trick Brock and attack from behind. Seth will win the title. Kofi will lose his match with Daniel Bryan. And Lynch will win. Whatever, whatever happens in this match will determine the Kofi and Bryan match. If Brock retains, Kofi wins. If Seth wins, Daniel Bryan lose, um, if Seth wins, then Kofi loses. Simple as. I reckon we're, I didn't pick Seth to win this, but we're opening the show. I think that'd be one way to get the fans on side, despite Seth beating Brock. And then having Kofi lose to Bryan. But my pick was for Kofi to win. Brock taking at roll out early on there. And on to him straight away. Brock doesn't want that big anymore. I reckon I could take him. Let's see how this match goes, guys. See you in a bit. Well, this match has been going for about five minutes now without actually having a match. Uh, Brock attacks Seth from the outset as he's getting into the ring. Since he's decimated him, he's sitting there five on the out on the outside. He's put him over the table, on the house tables, two or three times. He caught him in the ring. What to start the match? The ref said, I've got to check on Seth. Seth was in pain. Brock then lobbed him over the top rope to the outside again. And the match has just officially started. Uh, I think this is a good way of screwing Seth out of his championship. 
I said on the preview, I didn't feel that Seth was worthy of winning it right now because the push has been terrible. He's not believable as Universal Champion as it is. He's not the one you want to see taking it off Brock right now. And I don't think we're going to. I think Kofi beats Brian and Seth loses this match as it is right now. Let's get back to it. And just like that, Brock Lesnar gets a taste of his own medicine. So, Brock takes H. AJ took Seth up for an F5. AJ, uh, bloody hell, it's because AJ's on the TV at the minute. Seth slipped over the back of Brock Lesnar, uh, pushed him into the referee. Referee falls to the outside of the ring. Seth hit a low blow on Brock. Then a, uh, I think he went with a super kick uh, to the head. Yeah, whilst Brock was down. Then he was able to hit a curb stomp. The ref gets back in the ring. Heyman's telling him there was a low blow, it was a low blow, ref ain't listening, because there's no proof of that. Seth then hit a second curb stomp, and then a trifecta of curb stomps by hitting a third one, and got the pin, one, two, three. Was it worthy of a Universal Championship match? No. But have many of uh, Brock's matches been? No. I was expecting a similar match to AJ and Brock, or Daniel Bryan and Brock, or Finn Balor and Brock. With the amount of matches they got on, we didn't get that. They've got a quick, you know, screw job match. Brock is now no longer the Universal Champion and will go off to compete in UFC against Daniel Cormier, I'm assuming, pretty soon. With the next, I reckon, three months, we'll see that fight probably in the summertime. We now have AJ taking on Orton. My pick was AJ for this match, but I don't see him giving us AJ and Seth winning. Uh, at the beginning of the show, as well as a Kofi win later on. I'm saying right now, I'm telling you now, bear in mind we're only on the second match. Daniel Bryan will not be losing his title to Kofi Kingston. I really don't see that. And if he does, then Flair wins the women's undisputed, the unified title for the women. It won't be, but you're not going to hear Becky Lynch, Kofi and Seth winning on the side WrestleMania. It does not happen. Uh, I'm going with Orton to win this match now. But they want to wrestle in AJ Styles. I just can't see him giving AJ and Seth two wins at the beginning of the show. Maybe they do. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. So we just had a victory for AJ over Randy Orton in the second match of the main event of WrestleMania 35. I'm not surprised. AJ is always going to beat Orton in a uh, one pay per view. It's inevitable. You know, I mean, it's not even a surprise, is it really? They're never going to give Orton a win over AJ. AJ rarely loses on a pay-per-view. We now got Lacey Evans coming up for some stupid freaking reason. Who cares? Do you? I don't. Fuck off, get off my TV, stupid bitch. Sorry, but she really irritates the crap out of me. Just constantly walking out and not doing jack shit. So anyway, AJ beat Randy Orton, hit a phenomenal forearm on the outside, a phenomenal forearm in the ring, and won the match. We did get an uh, attempted RKO from Randy, which failed, and then he hit a second RKO. Um, there was a pay, uh, a pay kick, I think it was, by, or step up in security, by AJ on the turnbuckle. And he gets the pin on Randy, I think that's how it went. Randy kicks out, and as soon as he's kicked out, he's able to hit the RKO, but AJ, because he is AJ Styles, kicked out of the RKO, and that was that, a minute, a moment later, AJ hit a pale kick, and then a phenomenal forearm in the ring, and got the win, we now have the match I predicted to start the show, it's the Smackdown Tag Team Championship match, Featuring the Usos, Alistair Black, Ricochet, um, who's the other two teams? Rusev and Nakamura. And my mind is blank on the fourth team. It's not the New Day, is it? Let's see if we can find out. You know what's a bit of a joke? Is that somebody like Bray White has been ready to come back for so long? Like, we know he's been ready for ages. He's been putting out tweets and stuff for the last couple of months. And yet, we're at WrestleMania. We're still not seeing him. 
Kevin Owens is back fit and rest. He was at the it was on the last pay per view. Bear in mind that Kevin Owens was on the oh there we go the part of the other tag team in this match. Stupid me for not remembering that. Owens is back on the main roster. You know he had that match with Daniel Bryan and now he can't get WrestleMania. As far as I'm aware, we'll not see him on this show unless he makes an appearance at some point. Maybe we see Elias and Owens do something or other together. I don't know. But you've got Angle and Corbin. I don't, I don't get it. There are some matches I'm looking forward to on this. Um, Angle and Corbin being one of them. And another one being Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley. Not looking forward to that whatsoever. Right, I'm going to make a coffee because we need some caffeine to keep us going on this. And then I'll be back to watch this match. Okay, so we are back and we have no new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, which is the right decision. The Usos retain. It was the bar taking on the Usos, taking on Alistair Black and Ricochet taking on um, Nakamura and Rusev. They had a really staged bit of this match. Like, I hate these sort of parts of matches. It was where Cesaro got Ricochet. Uh, he started doing these like spinning round crap where he holds his legs and Ricochet holds his head and he's been round the ring for ages and ages. This went on for five minutes. No shit. I'm not lying to you for a second. About five minutes he did this for. And whilst he was doing that, Seamus had, uh, I think it was one of the Usos or somebody at first over the top rope was bashing his chest like he does. He got to do it to four people without any of them getting away. I think Rusev had it first. Then Nakamura, that was it, Rusev, then Nakamura, and then Alistair Black, and then one of the Usos. Like, none of them got out of it, or one of the Usos, then Alistair Black. You're like, what the hell are you all doing, just standing there with your arms over the top rope, letting another man do that to you? It was just a farce. And then Ricochet had the Boston Crab, or the Sharpshooter, rather, putting him by uh, Cesaro. Some annoying kitties now. Trimming their hitch or cutting their grass or something or other outside. Just to say that short for a minute. And in the end, the Usos were a double soup kick to Cesaro to retain their title titles, which is the right decision because Ricochet and Alistair Black are on NXT, they're on Raw, they're on SmackDown, they're not going to be your SmackDown champions. The bar have only had the titles recently. Nakawa and Rusev are just there to. Built to fill in the numbers, so to speak, make up the numbers. So, the Usos retaining, yeah, definitely the right decision. We're now seeing clips of uh, the Hall of Fame from Saturday evening. What the hell did Tory Wilson do to deserve to earn a place in the Hall of Fame? I was around as a kid back then when Tory Wilson and Stacey Keebler were on um, Raw and SmackDown, and they had Billy Kidman who was married at the time to Tori Wilson. I don't know the hell she did back then to get to the Hall of Fame. Absolute joke in my opinion. We've had the Honky Tonk Man, um, Bruce the Barber, Beefcake, DX, obviously they were inducted, uh, Booker T and his brother Sugar. Sugar, um, what the hell was his name now? Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, Booker T. Sugar, not Sugar Ray, was it? That was it Sugar Ray? I think it was. And uh, they were just doing that little speech. I'm not sure what the next match will be, but I'm still sticking with Kofi loses his match after Seth won the Universal Championship. That's my prediction. Hey, let's get back to it. We are now on to The Miz versus Shane. A match between two men who neither of them can throw a punch. I mean, I've seen my dog throw better punches than these two. Shane's style does not look in any way effective whatsoever, unless he's jumping off a 40 foot body bridge or something like that onto a brown opponent the miz doesn't look hard in the slightest so yeah it's a pretty bad average match but it's a falls count anywhere anyway so we will see some big big bumps i'm assuming shane just attacked the miz's dad but the miz he went he put his hands on him he then takes uh, the miz out lays him on a table announce table the Miz's dad jumps in the way before Shane can go off the top turn but got onto the Miz on, who's laying on the table. He then gets in the ring with Shane and he puts his hands up and then Shane corrects his hands like, no, this is how you hold your hands in a fight. And then Shane um, says, look, get out of here. And he's, the Miz's dad thinks better of it and he's about to get out of the ring when Shane attacks him. The Miz 
Chris then uh, takes advantage of the distraction, gets the pair off of Shane, gets some medical assistance for his dad, and now they are up on the, on, uh, in between the crowd and on like a staging area, when, well, could, where they are off the big lighting or like crap, and Shane is at the minute taken out on the Miz, he's about to DDT him on the stage, yep, just DDT him on the stage, let's see how this goes guys. Well that was clever, weren't it, Miz? Bloody idiot. Um, he ended up kicking the crap out of Shane. Shane actually took a bump onto like a golf cart, a golf buggy. And then off that, he fell down on the right foot. It was pretty impressive. And they end up on a camera platform quite high up, I'd say about 20 foot in the air. Something like that. Maybe a bit more. I'd say about 20 foot. About like the size of, size of one of the ladders you see in a ladder match in WWE. And now Shane's about to go off it, I didn't think the Miz would, and Shane's there begging, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I've gone too far, I'm sorry for what I've done to you, and the Miz suplexes Shane off of this camera platform, down on top, a stage and area set up with mats and bloody boxes and shit underneath, and suplexes Shane straight through, it. well straight onto it, the problem was that Shane ended up, while they're advertising money in the bank, When's that on? Let's have a look. When is money in the bank? Money in the bank, money in the bank, money in the bank, 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 bank. Money in the bank, money in the bank, money in the bank, 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 bank. I forgot all about Dolph Ziggler, they're just Sean Dolph. He's still in WWE, isn't he? How the hell? Over not seven ages. May 19th, money in the bank, nine days after my birthday. Wow. So, what was I saying to you? Is that Keenan? like it was all he had oh Shane and Miz up there the Miz suplexes Shane off the camera platform down about 20 foot but the Shane but Shane ended up on top of the Miz and they pinned him they carried the pin which is bloody ridiculous that they're gonna call that a pin and Shane won the match there you go Shane man best in the world still what a load of crap don't say I didn't warn you I said on my preview, there's a chance, a slight chance, the Iconics could win this match, the women's tag team match, tag title match. It already means absolutely nothing at all, the tag titles, the women's tag titles don't. They haven't really meant anything whilst Bailey and Sasha Adam, I didn't give a damn. They've had no memorable matches. And now, the Iconics have just stolen the titles in the Fatal 4 way. You had, um, what's her name, Beth Phoenix. Hit her big slam, face planting slam, whatever the hell she calls it, on Bailey off the top turnbuckle. Bailey was out of it. Phoenix had the match won for her and Natalia. And out of nowhere, um, Billy Kay and. I forget the other one's name. Peyton Royce. Peyton Royce threw uh, Beth Phoenix out of the ring under the ropes. Kay comes in, gets the pin. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce win the women's tag titles who the hell cares like literally who cares those titles don't mean sod all especially with them being on the iconics but i didn't see to mean and now you're having a chance is not need to give it to them two idiots bloody useless buggers are in the ring that they are there's no need to give it to um phoenix and natalia phoenix is probably there after the next couple of weeks and you're not going to give it to, well, they give it to the Iconics. Now, I said Bailey and Sasha haven't done anything with them titles yet. They'll probably win them back in a couple of weeks or at Money in the Bank in May. But those tag titles are worthless as it is right now. Well, this is definitely one way to shit all of the fans who have been desperate for Kofi Mania. Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan are next up. Bear in mind, this is before Kurt Angle and Baron Corbin. This is before Batista and Triple H. This is before um, Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor. The main event is obviously going to be Rousey, Flair and Lynch. We already know that. Of course we do. But to put this match so far down the card is ridiculous. I mean, what match what matches have we got after this? Balor and Lashley. Uh, Triple H, Batista. Angle, Corbin. Roman, Drew McIntyre. What is the betting? I mean, I'm only on Kofi and Brian here. What the hell is the betting?
fitting that we see Roman and Drew go on second to last. So a cow main event, just to give, you know, Roman a little bit of a push. But this is definitely one way of screwing over Kofi Kingston. He ain't winning the title. I, I swear down he ain't now. I'd be very shocked if he does. Okay, so we are nearly at the end of the Brian Kofi match. And my opinion has changed, I'll be honest. I am pretty certain Kofi's going to win this. Brian is uh, running knee and he didn't finish Kofi off. He's had the belt lock on him. He didn't finish Kofi off. He's going to win the uh, WWE title. Oh my God. Holy shit. But does it mean anything? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. There's a reason Vince put this match so far down the card. It's so we can't say. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the missus. There's a reason Vince put this match so far down the card. It's so we can't turn around and say he screws off with Kofi. He can say, I give you Kofi Mania, you got it. But he was nowhere near the main event. That's why it won't mean F all. Won't mean sod all at all. Yes, Kofi will win the title in a minute. Yes, he'll be the WWE Champion. He'll probably hold it until after Saudi Arabia. Then he'll drop it. He'll defend it money in the bank. He'll lose it at after um, Saudi Arabia when Daniel Bryan will regain the championship. That's my prediction. But it doesn't mean anything. Who cares if you win a title? Like midway through the WrestleMania, it's nowhere near the main event. It's a shame. It really is. So, Kofi wins with um, Trouble in Paradise. I think it's Trouble in Paradise. Uh, they hit on What's his name? <laughs> Daniel Bryan. And then afterwards he gets the proper WWE title. Not a wooden cardboard box shit that they've been dangling around Daniel Bryan's waist for a while now. Then I'm winding it on to get to the next match. I see Rey Mysterio's entrance. I think, okay, we'll skip it about a minute so we get through Joe's entrance. Get onto the match. And all of a sudden Drew McIntyre's walking down. Oh, what the hell's happened here? I wind it back. I find out that the Joe and Ray match, which I completely forgot was taking place. Probably a good job, but it was probably an element. I forgot about it. Because Ray hits a 619 from the start, goes up to the top turn buckle, Joe catches him, plants him, and then hooks in the cookie in the clutch. I uh, didn't plant him, so uh, Ray ended up on his ass, and Joe gets a cookie in the clutch and chokes him out in about 30 seconds of the match starting. Joe retains his US title. What a waste of a match for Ray and Joe. How do everyone? So I'm hanging in strong. Not dozed off yet. Marley's had a bit of a kip back there. He's just waking up now. Uh, we've had Roman defeat Drew McIntyre. That's how it made me feel. Nina have sent me to sleep. Roman Reigns matches always do. But he beat uh, Drew McIntyre with a spear. Roman wins. Woo. Then we had Elias in the ring. He's going to do his little shtick. Before we fa we seen John Cena come down just in his 2002 ring gear. His uh, fucking omics. And he ripped Elias a new asshole. 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 Butthole. Whatever. Um, who's completely ripped him apart before laying him out with an AA. Uh, I had to check that it was John Cena. I was like, who's that? I thought it was somebody coming down dressed as John Cena. And now we have Batista and Triple H. And Triple H had a great um, entrance as he always does. Come out like a Mad Max style style vehicle. It's pretty cool. And Batista actually tripped up off the bottom rope when he was trying to get into the ring. Um, Triple H has apparently broken Batista's fingers with a pair of like, pliers but now Batista must have gone out to sell because he isn't selling that his fingers are hurt in the slightest we had Triple H pin Batista down with a chair in the ring and pull his nose ring out which obviously was a fake ring he hasn't actually pulled it out and currently a minute ago Batista put the steps on the, the announce table he's gone up Batista bombed Triple H through off the steps and through another announce table and now Triple H has just gone for 
his famous sledgehammer and conveniently he has two. Towards the bed we see both men with a sledgehammer in a mob or two. It's never meant to be a wrestling match, it's always going to be a beat the shit out of each other, brutal, you know, weapons and crap sort of match. One that Al Snow would have been proud of in the past, and Tommy Dreamer. Triple H has the sledgehammer, but Batista just speared Batista at uh, Triple H. Here we go. So we had a uh, powerbomb by Triple H onto Batista, on Batista on the steel steps in the ring. Then a moment or like Batista DDT'd Triple H on the steps before Ric Flair came out to the ringside past Triple H the sledgehammer and Triple H ran, jumped off the steps in the ring that was and nailed Batista with the sledgehammer and then hit the pedigree for the victory. It means nothing really does it means Triple H's wrestling in ring wrestling career continues. Batista will go away, maybe for good, maybe we'll see him in a couple of years time, who knows. And now I'm stuck with this trash Kurt Angle in his farewell match against Baron Corbin. I mean all the matches that we could have had until I mean we still got Finn Balor and Bob Bobby Lashley here. I might just sort of move these on because I really cannot be arsed with either. Baron Corbin is impersonating John Cena saying you can't see me. So I'm assuming we're about to see John Cena in a minute helping out Kurt Angle. That makes sense. Otherwise why now? Why on earth would he impersonate? Ah, I got it. John Cena's first match in WWE all the years back was against Kurt Angle. And he beat Kurt Angle. So Corbin is impersonating Cena as if to say, you can't see me and mocking Kurt Angle that he'll lose his last match in the ring to Baron Corbin. What's the bet we see Kurt Angle appearing on other wrestling shows around the world for other companies after this? It usually happens when they need to make some buddy money and whatnot. And they continue to just cut, you know, until they like Ric Flair and can barely bloody move. Angle's going up top, Baron Corbin's down on the floor, Angle shouldn't go up top, it never pays off when he does. Comes off the top turn, but go back, backwards somersault, completely misses. And Corbin hits end of days. Not a very good one though, I'm afraid. And he's won. What the hell's the point in that? Now we're going to see John Cena, guarantee it. Baron Corbin just beat Kurt Angle with an end of days. And I guarantee we'll now see John Cena come out. I'll be very surprised if we don't. Why are, otherwise, why the hell else would you have? Kurt Angle lose his farewell match to Baron Corbin. Fans are stood there, oh my god, what just happened? What a shit show. Not the pro, not the WrestleMania, but this this match. This Kurt Angle, Baron Corbin crap. I didn't want to watch it. I've had to put make myself see it and watch this match. Angle misses the somersault off the top turn, buckle backwards somersault. And Corbin scoops him up and hits the end of days. There you go. Okay. I'm going to be completely honest with you, as I always am. Well, I've just skipped through to the end of this uh, Demon Finn Balor against... Bobby Lashley match. I have no interest in Bobby Lashley in a wrestling ring at all. No, sir. Thank you very much. Um, and after like six hours of wrestling or seven, eight hours of wrestling, now ever I've watched today, I really don't. The last thing I want to see is Bobby Lashley in a wrestling ring. So I've skipped that crap right to the end. And uh, Finn Balor power bombed Bobby Lashley and then hit the coup de grace to win the IC title. Don't know why they took it off in the first place. They felt the need to. As long as Bobby Lashley stays away from a wrestling ring for a few months now, I'll be quite happy with that. I'm assuming it's now the main event, from what I'm aware, uh, Rousey taking on Lynch, taking on Flair for the Unified Women's or Undisputed, is it Unified or Undisputed, whichever, um, Women's Wrestling, Women's Title. They just announced that the crowd is 82,265. Alexa Bliss has just come out and said that. And we're going to get onto the main event, guys. And then I can finally stop watching wrestling until tomorrow when we watch Raw. Hopefully there'll be some good call-ups. I'm hoping so anyway. A few shocks tomorrow. 
So we are just kicking off now with the main event. We got Rousey, Flair and Lynch in the ring. Before the match we saw Rousey, so Flair landed in a helicopter in the car park. Uh, Rousey came down with that, um, that female rock singer singing her song. Flair is currently letting Rousey and Lynch go at it. Lynch looks pretty badass with her, the hair and makeup done the way that they've done it. Why is it with Rousey's stupid walk to the ring? <laughs> you gotta laugh. Um, Flair finally gets involved and gets tucked to the outside by Rousey. Rousey, we're hip, well, she's got a hip toss on Lynch. Nope, she's rammed into the barricade backwards. Rousey in control of this match. She could now got uh, Flair up on her back and just slams her to the floor. Rousey in, f in full control. She's in beast mode at the minute. She's now getting Lynch up on her shoulders. Oh, but Lynch comes down and fr manages to push Rousey into the turnbuckle. That does not stop up the big boot from Lynch does. And then Flair scoops up Rousey and flings her over her back, over her head into the barricade at ringside. Lynch and Rousey down now. Flair rolls back into the ring. Both the women's titles, the Raw and SmackDown titles on the outside on podiums looking pretty cool. At the end I guess we'll see, say bye bye to them too and we'll get a really cool looking one. Lynch back in the ring with Flair now. Oh my eyes, bloody hell. Lynch and Flair saying, you want it, I want it, you want it, I want it. And they're going at it, tooth and nail, slogging it out, punch for punch. Friggin' I would not want to get on the end of one of them punches. No, thank you. And Lynch is down. And Flair now working on the arm of Becky Lynch. You'd think she'd work on the bad knee. You know, one that's injured for a while. We should go for an arm bar. And you do not want a bad arm when you're in a match, including Ronda Rousey, who's down and out of the knee. Lynch with a fist to the throat of Flair. And she's now got the boot. She's going to go for a fig uh, figure four. On Charlotte Flair. Flair kicks Lynch away. Flair comes back. Lynch comes back off the rope. With a bit of a club to the face. And that gives Rousey time to get in the ring. Rousey climbs up Flair. Boots Lynch in the face. Hip toss or arm drag rather. Rousey in control this match now. That is until Flair gets the knee and a big boot to the head of Ronda Rousey. And now she's taking her for a power powerbomb. Double powerbomb by Lynch and Flair on Rousey. We're going to see it. Oh no, she was going to throw him to the outside, but Rousey holding on. She's choking out Flair on the ropes. And Lynch like, yeah, go on then, I'll let you do it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Rousey was hanging on to Flair and she was choking her out over the top ropes. Obviously, Undertaker doing the past. Lynch comes off the rope and drop kicks Rousey to the back, which flings Rousey off off the ring apron to the floor. Oh, that was brutal. I am not kidding you. That would not have tickled. Holy crap. Now Lynch goes for a close line on Flair, but Flair catches her and face plants her into the turnbuckle and a big boot. Flair got for the pin, but only gets a two count. Oh, you got the two there on Becky Lynch. Put the hilly on, a great match. They're showing that again where um, Rousey got drop kicked to the outside. That would have hurt big time. I'm not sure how long this match has to go. Flair's pulled down the knee padding. Exposed her knee and dropped, well, then dropped her, uh, the front of her leg over the head of Becky Lynch. I'm afraid you're not going to beat Becky Lynch by dropping your foot over the back of her head. No chance. We apparently we have about 18 minutes to go. And obviously a few minutes that will be of celebrations. So I reckon about 15 minutes of this match left. Flair going up on the top turnbuckle, she never hits these, she always fails. And there, that was no difference. She went for this backwards somersault, like she always does, and landed on Lynch's knees. Lynch then got an armbar on Flair. Rousey's back in now, though, 
and she's getting her own arm bar on Becky Lynch. She's rolling Lynch around. She's got the arm bar locked in. She's got it. She's got it. She's got the arm bar on Becky Lynch. Oh, but Flair with her running, huge running knee, taking Rousey's head off her shoulders. No, not literally, obviously. And Flair looking down on the fallen Lynch and Rousey now. She's eyeing them up for what she wants to do next to them. And she attempted a double bulldog there, and it didn't work out in the slightest. But she got the pin on Flair, on Lynch. And now she's got Rousey in the pin. Both kick out. Sloppy, that was from Flair. Went for a running uh, double bulldog, and failed miserably. She's now got Lynch back up. And throws her to the outside through the middle ropes. <coughs> Dog decided to start barking then because he heard some idiots outside. Whether I'll, I'll choose to edit that out, I guess I'll have to. I'll have to remember to, though. Lynch, and uh, so Rousey and Flair. Flair just slapping the shit out of Rousey. Rousey, like, come on, bitch, give me some more. Oh, and then a slap across the face. <laughs> Rousey comes off the ropes with a huge knee. Or running kick her somewhere over to the head. She now go for another arm bar. No, she's just trying to choke out Flair. But Flair powering out of it. I reckon we're gonna see a power bomb here. Either that or a Boston Crab. What's she going for? Yep, she's got the Boston Crab. In on there. Uh, oh, is that a sharpshooter? It's not Boston Crab, a sharpshooter. Oh, well, there you go. That's how you do a, a bulldog. Running bulldog from Fl uh, Lynch. Plants and Flair. And now she gets Rousey up. And she's got her. What's she gonna do here? Oh, she's gonna do a double. She's got. <laughs> She's got Flair for the Bulldog, sorry for the DDT, and she hit a, like a backwards sort of DDT on Rousey at the same time. Failed on a pin with Rousey, failed on a pin with Flair. Oh my god, I do not think my battery will last for me to finish this video. Oh no, what are we going to do? What was our battery looking like? 15%? We'll keep it going guys, we're not stopping this, hopefully we have enough battery to finish this. Bear in mind we've been going for about eight hours now. Lynch ran at Flair but Flair with a big boot up. And an uppercut from Lynch on Flair and a second uppercut. And a third uppercut. These European uppercuts. Oh and a headbutt. Lynch going old school. <laughs> I'll take you down a headbutt bitch. Elbow though by Flair on to uh, Lynch who's cut off the ropes. And now Flair has got Lynch. Custom Prince to turn book up. Lynch reverses it. Flair over the top rope. And a boot through the middle ropes to Becky Lynch. Lynch down. Rousey getting up. Flair's on the top turn book up again. The dippy cow never learns. Lynch has got her up though. She's robbing the top onto the turn book herself. And she's going to German suplex. Oh, piss off your motorbikes. bikes. Super German suplex. There from, um, Becky to Flair off the top turnbuckle. You won't beat her like that though, I'm afraid. 40%. Oh. How long's this match got to go? How long have we got to go, guys? About 14 minutes of the whole show to go. Rousey up top now. And double crossbody onto Flair and Lynch. And she's got the pin. You can't get a pin to him like that. You dippy cow. And now Rousey with an arm drag to Lynch. And same to Flair, taking them both out, which goes for a double arm bar, for God's sake. Shit like this just does not look believable in the slightest. A double arm bar from Rousey to Lynch and Flair, but they get up onto their feet and lift Rousey up for a double power bomb. No surprise there. Yep, a double power bomb, but she's still holding on. Rousey's not let go of the arms of uh, Flair and Lynch. And they lift her up for a second double power bomb. And Rousey's like, no, 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 no. Bye, bitch. Double power bomb again. Again, she's still got their arms. She's still holding on with her legs around the necks of Flair and Lynch. A third power bomb from Lynch and Flair to Rousey. And she looks a bit scared now, Rousey does. Yep, yeah, she was wow, she looks scared. She looks like she's about to cry. And they get um, Rousey off. And Flair lobs Lynch to the outside. And Flair with the 
pin on Rousey. Rousey the kick out. How are we looking? 13%. This is going to be a close one, guys. Might have to catch the last five minutes in a bit. Hopefully not. Rousey back, sorry, flare back to her feet. She looks a bit dishevelled at the minute. She looks like one of the women out of the Vikings programme. The main one, Agatha, I think her name was back in the day. When I used to watch Vikings. Rousey like, for God's sake. I want you to put this makeup on. I've got to redo it in a bit. <laughs> She's looking at Flair. Uh, sorry, Lynch. Lynch ducked. Rousey and uh, Flair ended up between the ropes. Lynch got her the boot. And then plants her with a rock bottom. A rock bottom to Flair by Lynch. I thought she had the three count. I thought she had the three. It was only a two. I thought he counted three. It was a two. Lynch is like, four, you cow. Get out my ring, you bitch. Get out my pup. Get out my ring. Lynch looking bloody nuts. She was like, just escaped from the mental asylum. Like, Who killed all my cats? Lynch and Rousey are going to go at it. Oh, come on, Lynch. Suplex to flare and roll to Rousey and rolls through for an armbar. Rousey in the armbar by Lynch. Lynch has got it cinched in. She's like, come on, I'll pull your arm off. She rolls through and keeps the armbar in place. Come on, break the bitch's arm. Break her arm, bitch. Come on. She's going to do it. She's going to snap Rousey's arm clean off. She's going to do it. Oh, no. Rousey gets the bottom row with both hands now. And she picks up. She's picking up Lynch with one arm. Lynch up there and dunks her on to the turnbuckle. And we're at 11% on the battery, guys. Rousey then runs at Lynch. Lynch moves out of the way. Or up, climbs up. Rousey hits the turnbuckle and Lynch locks in the arm part over the turnbuckle and the top rope. She's going to gonna pull your arm off. Flair, though, breaks it up and Rousey falls to the outside. Flair now in the ring with Lynch. Lynch tried to kick Flair. Flair sold it, even though Lynch missed it. Flair was too far away for that kick. And Flair got up top with Lynch. She's got her. Lynch is on the top turn buckle. Flair is up on the top turn buckle. And oh, freaking hell. She just literally some sort of suplex, a one arm suplex, I don't know what the hell it was. Like an arm, uh, arm bar takedown, suplex stroke, slam. And Lynch come down with a bang and a two count for Flair. Rousey's back in the ring now though. She's like, my turn. Down to 10%. Oh no. 10%. Um, Rousey now has Flair. We still have 10 minutes to go. We've got 10% battery. Flair has Rousey for the pin, but Lynch is back up. She's got for another arm bar. This is definitely a match of arm bars. Why do we see a different submission for Christ's sake? Oh! She tried to look in the armbar and flare, but flare slams Lynch's face into the bottom turnbuckle. Lynch on the outside of the ring apron. Flare and Rousey in the ring. Flare with a big boot to Lynch, knocking her down onto the outside. Rousey spins Flare around. Flare boots the leg off, the left leg of Rousey, and starts stamping on the back of her leg. There's like some cuts on the back of Rousey's leg. I hope she hasn't been self-harming at the fourth losing her title. No, I'm not trying to make, take the piss out of self-harmers. And Ra Flair has Rousey and wraps her leg around the turnbuckle. Rousey's leg looking a bit bashed up now. And again, she's got the... Oh, she's got the figure four. Or the figure eight, whichever she calls it. On the ring post. And once again, Rousey looks a bit scared. And Flair locks it in on the ring post. And... Rousey, <laughs> you can't get my leg, you bitch. And Flair and Lynch breaks it up. Why? Let it happen. As long as Rousey doesn't tap, you're, letting, you're breaking up Rousey's pain there. And Flair throws Lynch into the barricade on the outside. And Flair says, it's mine, it's mine. And we're down to 8%. Oh, no. And Flair back in the ring with Rousey. And she's going back for a figure four. Rousey rolls through. She's got the pin. One, two. Oh, only a two count. The only thing I know for certain is Rousey's not winning this. Because as far as I'm aware, she's gone away for a break after this, after WrestleMania. Rousey 
in a figure four. Flair has the figure four on Ronda Rousey. She's got the figure four. She's pushing herself up, pushing her hips up to add to the pressure on Ronda Rousey's knees, on legs and ankles. Oh! Lynch just cut off the top turnbuckle with a flying elbow on top of uh, Rousey and um, Lynch to break that up as her and Flair to break up that figure four. She's come off the top turn, but got a flying elbow. Macho man, oh no it wasn't, it was a leg drop. Just stuck the legs out there and dove onto them. We're down to 7%. We're going to have to come back to this in a minute. Oh no. I can't believe it. I can't believe we're not going to have enough battery to finish this off. We have like 7 minutes to go. I could sort microphones but it would sound crap. Because maybe Mike doesn't need um, to be plugged into the bottom of the phone. So I could charge at the same time. What's Lin Lynch is pulling out a table? I did not know. That. I think if it's like a triple threat match, I think anything goes. Is that the rules? Something stupid like that. She's pulled out a table anyway. I don't think she'll get so disqualified for doing that. I don't think the fans would let him if the ref tried to disqualify Lynch. I think they would sort of attack him. We're down seven percent battery still. We have five or six, six minutes to go. Uh, yeah, six minutes. Lynch sitting on the table in the ring, and Rousey's down. She's holding the back of her leg. Flair must be on the outside. This has been a really good match. A few too many arm bars, for my opinion, but still a really good match. Flair's back in the ring as Lynch sets up the dining table. Flair the forearm to the back of the head of Lynch. And now she's about to... Oh, she smashes Lynch's face off the table. And she's got Lynch laid out on the table now. Flair going up top. And another somersault she's going to miss. Lynch about to power bomb Flair through the table. Rousey in there to stop it. Why let Lynch power bomb Flair through the table, you dippy cow? Oh, batteries at 5%, guys. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got charged at 9%. We're going to try and finish this off. Rousey has Lynch up on her shoulders. She's going for Piper's Pit or whatever the hell she calls it. Lynch comes off the top, though. She's going for another armbar again. Flair with a double spear. Out of nowhere, double spear, and she pins Lynch. And I thought to hell she had it then. Only two and a half. And now she's pinning Rousey. Stupid how they keep doing this. Absolute stupidness. Flair looking on like she can't believe. She didn't get the, the win then. Flair limping around with her bad leg. She's now lifting up the table. She's setting the table for dinner. I'm starving. It's just cooking. I'll have some. I've got chilli. Which in about five minutes I'll be going to eat because this is nearly done. She's set up the table in the corner on an angle as they always do. What's the pain? Flair has gone through that table. Rousey getting up. Oh, we're down to eight percent. Rousey slammed into the table by Flair. And again, do you remember back in the day when Rousey was first things when she first became champion and Flair were her best mates? Here's Lynch. Uh, Lynch back up. Dodges. Flair, but then Flair with a spear. She just took Lynch out of her boots near enough. Another two count. Only another two count. And Flair is like, oh, holy shit, my big ears are getting bigger. And I still ain't winning this title. And we have like three minutes to go. Three and a bit minutes to go. And our battery is now on. 8%, we should be good. We should be good. All three women down, but Flair's sitting up. Shaking her head. She's shaking her head. She's getting ready to go again. She's holding her knee. Her knee's hurting. Her she's trying to the protective bit around down the church of the dippy cow. She's uh, wobbling. But she's in the corner. Flair and Lynch by the table. And stood in front of it together. Flair was going to go for a double spear. But she's hip tossed by both women into the table. Don't really break it. Just kind of breaks it a bit. It's a bit of a shit, a bit of a crap, um, yeah, part of the, the match, really, that. And now we have Lynch and Rousey, which is what it should have been from the start. This is going to be it. The win is coming from these two now. Lynch and Rousey are going to go 
Joe at it to finish this match off. Flair's been took out of the match from that crap spot. And they're just going at it, punch for punch for punch. There's no way in hell it's believable that Lynch could keep up with Rousey. Oh, and Rousey off the ropes. Takes Lynch down with it, like it, I don't know, with her legs, basically. And now she's lifting, she's on her knees and she's powering up with Lynch on her shoulders. Go for Piper's pit on Becky Lynch. And she hits it. She hits it. Oh, no, Lynch fell, fell through an armbar on Rousey. She fell through an armbar. And the ref just said she's tapped. The ref said Rousey tapped. The ref said Rousey tapped. And the Lynch has won. Lynch has won. And she's won the title. And I don't think she tapped. I don't think Rousey tapped. Rousey got Lynch up on her shoulders. She was going for a Piper's pit. She sort of went, it was sort of flummoxed. I don't know, it just fell through. And Lynch got the armbar in. I mean, bear, bear in mind how many armbars have been put on each other in this match within five seconds. Apparently, Rousey tapped and it's over. And Becky Lynch is the unified champion or undisputed champion, whatever the frick you want to call it. And after eight hours, we have Becky Lynch, the man, as our champion. She just won the Raw and SmackDown titles together. And I think my punch is about to go. And Rousey's pissed off because she said she didn't tap. <laughs> punch is going, guys. Lynch. Just made Rousey tap to an armbar, and I don't think it was correct. I don't think it was the right decision. I don't think she tapped at all. I think it's a screw job finish. And Flair's crying on the outside, and Rousey's pissed off on the outside somewhere. And Becky Lynch is celebrating in the ring. And that's your WrestleMania 35 review, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. My bad. It wasn't a, a tap at all. It wasn't a, the armbar. It wasn't the armbar. My stupid, bloody idiot self. I've got no sound on, so I don't know what happened. It was a pin. She gets up because of the pipe's pit. Rau uh, Lynch rolls out off the back with Rousey. Gets her shoulders to the mat. A very quick pin. Bear in mind. One, two, three. There you go. There's your win. That's how Becky Lynch won this match and the titles. Thank you.